I'm Mitch Mockey, President of Go For Broke National Education Center. Welcome to a special series entitled Heroes Among Us, Courage, Patriotism, and Sacrifice. In this series, we tell the story of the Japanese American soldiers of World War II, how they fought for democracy and for equality. We share interviews with these veterans from our Hanashi Oral History Collection. In this first episode, we focus on the breaking of the Gothic Line and the roles that the 100th Battalion and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team played in this historic assault. Between 1943 and 1944, the Nazi forces in Italy, using Italian slave labor, constructed a defensive line of concrete bunkers drilled into the mountainsides. Many miles of anti-tank ditches, 130,000 yards of barbed wire, air defense installations, and nearly 2,400 machine gun nests with interlocking fire across a 10 mile deep corridor that stretched 200 miles across Italy from its west coast at Carrara through the Apennine Mountains to its eastern coast at Pesado. The Gothic Line, as it was known, was the final German defense line in northern Italy. The Gothic Line appeared to be impregnable. Allied planes bombed it and Allied artillery blasted it, but they could not crack the Gothic Line. In March 1945, General Mark Clark demanded that he be given the Japanese American combat units to help break the Gothic Line. The 100th Battalion and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team were covertly deployed from southern France to Leghorn, Italy to engage in the assault. They landed in Livorno and began to prepare for the attack. And the 442nd and the 100th Battalion both uh, didn't seem to have impossible in their vocabulary. The plan was to conceal the Nice approach by moving at night and then make a surprise two-prong attack at dawn. The 100th Battalion would charge northward to Georgia Hill. The 3rd Battalion of the 442nd would scale the backside of Mount Fogarito to surprise the Nazis and then proceed southward. The plan was eventually to meet in the middle. On the night of April 3rd, the 100th Battalion moved west of Cereto. Meanwhile, the 3rd Battalion hiked eastward all night to the village of Azano, southeast of Mount Fogorito. Italian partisans guided them through the mountainous terrain. The next day, the battalions hid. When darkness fell on April 4th, the 100th moved towards Georgia Hill undetected. Simultaneously, the 3rd Battalion climbed the steep slope of Mount Fogorito. For eight hours, I and L Company soldiers plus M Company machine gunners scaled the 60 degree incline. Laden with packs and ammunition, they crawled up the steep, slippery, shale encrusted slopes. We were in the middle of the night with pitch black so we couldn't see anything, very, very treacherous. I mean, it was slippery, there was moisture in the air, the, the pathway was very, very narrow, and we were able to uh, keep in contact with each other by just touching the backpacks of the guy in front of us. The Nisei soldiers climbed for nearly eight hours. They knew that silence and secrecy were critical to the success of their mission. They also knew that if they were to slip and fall, they couldn't yell out. At least one soldier fell 300 feet to his death, but didn't utter a sound. You know, as a young guy, you think you're going to live forever. It was the first time that I thought I was going to be a goner. American tanks and mortars now blast German hillside strongholds in the center. By dawn on April 5th, the 100th Battalion was in place and ready to make an assault on Georgia Hill and the 3rd Battalion was in place for their surprise attack on Mount Fogorito. The soldiers of the 100th charged Georgia Hill. They had to contend with intense machine gun fire, mines, and hand grenades from the enemy. Six to eight hand grenades could be seen in the air at any given time during the attack. Additionally, there was friendly fire from the 329th Field Artillery Battalion. The Nisei soldiers were advancing so rapidly 
They were running ahead of the friendly artillery rounds. They were uh, bringing wounded right down the pass, so there was a huge boulder, I'd say like six foot around, and I was kind of on the south side of that. And we were kind of hunkered down, and I remember a shell hit right on top. Private First Class Sadao Munamori was one of the 100th Battalion soldiers. In the heat of the battle, Private Munamori made a frontal one-man attack through heavy fire and took out two machine gun nests. A grenade bounced off his helmet. The live grenade rolled toward two of his squad members. Without hesitation, he dove on the grenade and smothered the blast with his own body. He saved the lives of two men at the cost of his own. Private Sadao Munamori was four months away from his 23rd birthday. The 100th Battalion secured Georgia Hill in 32 minutes. While the 100th was advancing on Georgia Hill, the 3rd Battalion had reached the top of Mount Fogarito. The Nazis were completely unaware of their presence. Within 90 minutes, the crest of Mount Fogarito was secured. For the Nisei soldiers, the first day of combat on April 5th resulted in 20 soldiers being killed in action and 123 soldiers wounded. By the night of April 6th, the 100th Battalion and the 3rd Battalion had closed in from opposite directions and seized Mount Cereto. It was the beginning of the end for the Nazi forces. After 10 days, the Germans are driven almost entirely out of their fixed defense positions. On May 2nd, 1945, all Nazi forces in Italy officially surrendered. The Nisei soldiers of World War II served with great valor and courage. All the while their families back home faced discrimination, racial intolerance, and incarceration. Theirs is truly a great American story of courage, patriotism, and sacrifice.